Hey everyone, I'm Odette Maimoni, and today I'm going to introduce you to the BI bot I built, a smart assistant that helps you ask questions about your data using a natural language. All the code is available in my GitHub. It's an open code. So let's start. Odette Maimoni. Okay, so this is the BI bot. This is the BI bot that I spoke so much about before. I'm going to show you how it works. I'm going to uh, show you the code behind this. But first of all, let's see how it works. So this is the text input that everyone can ask uh, with the regular language questions. So like, what is the sale amount? Then click enter and I'm generate uh, the top matching schema for the LLM. Then for the first time, uh, it asked me to connect. It generates DAX query from the scheme that I gave. And in the end, it gives the results, the query results from my Power BI model. It basically takes this DAX query and then run this DAX query in the XMLA endpoint of my model and give the results that, be, that return from this DAX query. Let's try another question. When is the recent order? As you can see, as everything is happened first, a lot of things going on behind this uh, code, behind these seconds that what you can see, but everything is running fast. It, you know, to generate the right scheme for from this prompt, then the LLM know how to generate the right DAX query and then bring the results from this DAX query. So let's start from really, really beginning. You don't have to be a programmer to, to understand this video. Also remember that you can find all this code on my GitHub. You can find the link on the description of this video. So you can download it for your uh, laptop and try just whatever you want. And of course you can improve and suggest for code uh, improve to my code. Okay, so let's start step by step. I have this Power BI desktop, I have this dashboard, and my data for this bot is my uh, Power BI desktop file. As you remember, we can save the Power BI desktop as a PBIP model, and when you save it like that, you can get also the TMDL file. And this is the TMDL file, this is the data that I'm using to understand what is the metadata of my model. I'm not sending the LLM, the values, or the data of my work. This is a very, very secured progress because I'm only generate, I'm only sending to the LLM the metadata, the name of the columns, the name of the tables, and the relationship between them. This is it. This is the thing that I'm sending to the LLM, so there is no security issue here. So for those who don't know how to save the, the Power BI with TMDL, uh, with, with a TMDL file, you just need to file, then save as, browse this file, choose the right place to save it, and then you have to choose the PBIP. I'm going to save you, of course, the report itself, but also two folders, one with dot .report and one with dot .semantic model. When you click on the semantic model, you can see that you have a definition folder. In this definition folder, you can see you have tables, and here you can find all the TMDL file of the tables. You can find in this file the table name, the columns inside this table, the types. This information is going to help us generate DAX query because when we generate DAX query, we the, the, the LLM have to know, obviously, what is the name of the tables and the columns to generate the DAX that it needs because if you ask him what is the total sale of 24, it have to know which is the table. It, it cannot guess that. And also which is the columns that it need to generate the right DAX. So we have this data, we have this TMDL file, and this data is going to help us to generate DAX. Of course, this Power BI desktop is published to the service. You can see this Power BI desktop here in my uh, uh, Power BI service. I saved it in workspace and this workspace have to be able to run XMLA endpoint. You have to go to the setting and enable it. Okay, this is for the Power BI stuff. Now I'm going to show you the code. I'm going to explain you with a high level explanation just for you to know what I'm doing here because I know that you are a BI person, a BI developer 
is not necessarily know uh, all the terms and the logic with AI and programming. So I'm going to explain everything so you will understand what I try to do, what I try to do here, and you can take this code and then uh, adjust it to your needs. So let's start. Okay, let's start. So as I explained, I use the TMDL file to uh, generate the DACs. And to use the TMDL file, I have to get all the files. I mean, for each table, I have TM separate TMDL files. So I want to uh, extract all the, the necessary data from it and create one big file that I can use. So for this, I created this uh, Python. This is it for post. It, it basically took only the necessary data from the TMDL file and make it one big JSON file. So I can use it in my code because I need it as a JSON and I need it to be one file. When you're working with AI, you must know some terms. And one of the terms that I want you to know is RAG. RAG is a short of retrieval argumented generation. So it's a method that helps us to give the AI only the relevant data. With this method, we can make the AI more accurate. What do I mean? I told you that I'm creating one big uh, schema, one big JSON of all the uh, uh, TMDL files. I have all the tables and all the columns, but I'm not need all the tables and all the columns for, all, for each prompt, because when I ask him what is the, uh, my orders, what is the amount of my orders, I'm not going to use the team customer or I'm not going to use the fact sales. I, for this prompt, I'm going to use only the fact orders and maybe, I, and also I need the team date for this. So if I'm sending to the LLM yeah, the whole data, it can mistakenly took the wrong tables. So I can bring to the LLM just the necessary uh, uh, results, the necessary uh, tables and columns that it need to generate the DAX query. And I'm not giving him the answer. I'm, I'm only giving him uh, less data that it won't mistake. I'm just helping him not guessing wrong as answers. So this is a term that you have to know because I'm using this term here. I'm, I'm sending to the AI, to my bot, only the necessary tables and columns that it needs. So as you can see, in the BI bot I showed you, when I ask what is the recent order, it know to choose the fact internet cells and the right, the right columns that it may be need to generate the DAX and also the related dimension tables to these fact cells. And why we do that? Why not to give the LM the whole data? Not because uh, only because we want it to be more accurate, also because we have also the, the tokens issue. Tokens, it's also a new term that you have to know in order to understand the method that I'm using here. Token is a small chunk of text used by the AI. Usually one token is a four characters and we have limits. We cannot use all the tokens in the world. We have limit of how many tokens we can use in which one output. So we have to be careful of how many data we are using in one prompt. So remember, we have the prompt that the user is typing, but also for, for, uh, with that, we send the data uh, so the LLM will know which DAX to generate. So we have the prompt plus the data that we are, send, that we are sending with it. So we have to be smart to give only the necessary data so it will know to generate a right DAX. Also, we, don't forget, we have to give the right instruction to the LLM so it will know what is purpose. As you can see here, I send in the prompt, you are an AI specialized in generating accurate DAX. And also I give guide, guidelines so it won't mistakenly uh, generate uh, bad DAX. So we have to be smart with it. All this thing called prompt engineering to know how to use the right characters, not going wild with it because we have the token limits and and also to know what to tell the LLM so it gives the right results. So we also have the, this prompt we send in with the schema that we use in a form the prompt. So all this together should be smart and accurate so we can uh, send to the LLM only the relevant 
necessary information so it brings the right tax. So how we can understand from this prompt which schema we need to send the LLM. So this is another term that I want you to uh, know. It's called embedding. Embedding is a way to convert text to a number, vectors. These numbers is going to help us know what is the right data that is necessary from the prompt. What do I mean? If the user asking, like I asked here, when is the recent orders, each of these words is translate to uh, vectors, to numbers. I started with convert all my data to a numbers. It calls embedding. I embedded all my data and save it in a purpose database. So I have these vectors in a separate database. It means that each, uh, each word in my data translate into a vectors and numbers. And when the user asks questions, I also embedded is I'm also embedding is questions, and when I took this number, I'm looking into my database in my embedding data and try to find the closed one to his question, the closed numbers to his question. So like that, we can be more accurate and give only the right data. I said that I translate the word into a numbers. It means that it's not that uh, simple. I mean, it knows when you say uh, a banana and apple to be uh, something that could be uh, similar, could be, could be with the same uh, word, but it knows also that apple with iPhone could be similar and be uh, close to each other. So it knows like that this is the embedding, this is what this do. So if you want, you can also obviously look in, into this and uh, uh, try to find another uh, more info in the internet. But in general, in high level, this is the things that I'm doing here. I took my uh, file that uh, I created from all my TMDL tables and uh, embedding this one into uh, vectors. So I save this one in a Chrome database and I'm using this to only take the right uh, tables so it will know to use the right DAX query. All this just to minimize the prompt, to make it more accurate and not to spend a lot of tokens. Remember that. So after we know to, to, to take the right data with the prompt and with the instruction to the AI, we uh, want it to uh, generate DAX. We took the DAX and ran it in the XMLA endpoint. So, uh, as I said, we have to enable it in our workspace. And uh, after it generate the, the, the DAX, uh, after it uh, run it against the XMLA endpoint, uh, we uh, returned the query result. And uh, uh, all this thing is showing on Streamlit. What is Streamlit? It's a simple Python-based framework to uh, build a web apps. It helps us to uh, make all this code uh, something that we can use in a front level. Um, you obviously can use whatever framework you want, uh, but this is uh, the simplest one. So uh, you just need to uh, run the run Streamlit code and it will show everything in our uh, uh, explorer. So uh, this is the streamlet. And also I uh, did some style stuff. You can see the style CSS and uh, you can obviously change whatever you want. So this is for my code. Of course, I have a lot of things that I could talk about here, but you can drill through it and see. And also you can ask me, feel free to ask me whatever you want. And I want you to also uh, uh, know that I write all the things that you need to download uh, in order to uh, uh, use this code. So you have this requirements text file, so you just need to uh, run this file and then you can uh, work with this code. Okay, so I'm going to finalize with, uh, with, some, with the things that I think that this code could be improved with. Uh, obviously, you can make it more and more accurate. You can change your instruction to the LLM. You can uh, uh, make it better and better. But it is a good start for you to 
just take it and make it, uh, it's, it's a base of uh, something that you can create and make it even bigger. But uh, I have three things that I thought about that I want to, uh, in, in the, I'm, I hope in the close future, I will uh, update the code. Uh, one thing is in this uh, file, uh, I'm querying the data. Uh, this is the file that I know uh, to take only the, the closest uh, scheme, the closest uh, table with columns that I need from the prompt. And uh, to use this, I generate, I, I write here out coded in a relationship between uh, the fact and the dimension table. Uh, of, of course, you can think about a way to make it automatically because uh, I just uh, used small model, but uh, of course you're going to use your very large models with a lot of tables and dimensions. So, of course, you're not going to update it for each change. So, there is a way to make it more automatically and more efficient. Also, I'm sending to the LLM only the name of the columns and the table and the relationship between them, but I'm not sending the data type. And the data type, I mean the column type that uh, you can uh, extract from this file, from the TMDL, you can use the data type for each column. It can help with the generate better DAX. Obviously, if you have a string column, you want it to know not to use numeric value with it. So this is the things that I, I think uh, to make, to improve my code and to change in the future. Also, you can uh, give a format prompt. Uh, you can change it, make it more, more uh, accurate and uh, you can uh, uh, give the uh, grid line of using a measure before you generate DAX only with columns because uh, right now uh, I have a measure that can do the total uh, and it only use columns. So you can uh, give better uh, uh, DAX uh, uh, grid lines and better instructions here. And this is the thing that I think I can improve in the next uh, updates of my code. Uh, obviously, you can think about a lot of idea, also saving all the prompt in, in a separate database so you can uh, analyze it and uh, more and more and more ideas. Uh, but as I said, this is a really good thing to start. Uh, this is a, a, a code that works, it works fast and it gives the result. Also, uh, it can give uh, tables so you can download as a CSV and search in it. So this is a very, very uh, good start. And you can download my GitHub, you can download all the code and try it in your laptop. Of course, don't forget that I'm using here Azure OpenAI. So you will need op Azure OpenAI key. Also, you need all this credential, so uh, it will work for you. Uh, I'm using Azure, but you can use uh, whichever uh, uh, API that you want that works uh, with AI, obviously. So this is it. Uh, I hope you find it uh, useful for you and I'm here to listen to your question and don't hesitate, just ask me. Thank you. This is it. I hope you find it useful and I hope it inspires other developers to take it further. I can't wait to hear what you're saying about that and don't hesitate, ask me questions. I'm here for you. Bye-bye, thank you and I'll see you in my next video.